hope you had a nice, I'm going to kill my dog. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back. I'm not really going to kill, I'm going to actually kill my dog. The dog is fine. <laughs> Basically, this is just an excuse to play with my new Janessa Myrick's Nudist palette. It was on back order from Beautylish for a while, and I got the notification that it was back in stock, and I snapped it up really fast. Thank you to, I believe, April? I want to say April! Who sent me a DM on Instagram telling me about this, and we sat with bated breath waiting for this to come back in stock because it was kind of hard to get my hands on. So anyway, a while back, someone requested, and this was like the most me video request I've ever heard someone say, can you do a video on how to fake a sunburn? And I was like, yes, <laughs> I got you girl. So yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing today. I have some kind of old stuff that I have not touched in a minute from Tower 28. And we'll probably be kind of integrating a few of the other things that I rounded up in my favorites recently. And we will probably take a little bit of time and talk about Danessa Myricks, the makeup artist, the brand, uh, a little bit later on in the video. I'm going to move you guys in. We are going to take this from the very, very pale situation that it is to faking a sunburn in the safest way possible. So let's go ahead and jump in, guys. Did I have food in my teeth that whole time? It's always something, isn't it? Okay, so the first thing that we're going to use is the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint SPF 40 because the first step in faking a sunburn is to make sure that we don't get a real sunburn, <laughs> okay? Your girl did not get blessed with a lot of natural melanin and so I have to take every precaution. I'm kind of debating whether to do a favorites video this month. <laughs> I have some like faves, fails, and finds style things that I want to mention. It's kind of funny because I did the mid-year roundups last week and you would think that that would kind of cover everything, but I really thought that that was like, you know, a culmination and a lot of stuff that I've like tried and true tested and stuff like that and like almost like ranking them. But this is, you know, new skincare stuff that I've been trying and Huh, speaking of new skincare stuff that I've been trying, I've been trying the Comfy Water from Purito because the Centella Green Level Unscented has a, a little bit of salicylic acid in it, maybe a lot of bit of salicylic acid in it, I'm not really sure, but I wanted to get away from that just, you know, because pregnant and <laughs> Now something is rolling off of my skin and that's the only different thing that I used today. So that's charming. So yeah, maybe I'm not quite ready to do a favorites roundup just yet. I probably need to give some of these things a little bit more time. But yeah, so that's the Ilia. As far as concealer is concerned, I wanted to actually show you guys the Ritual Defeat that I mentioned as like my new old love in my roundup. Um, I have the Ethereal Veil Concealing Cover in the shade NYX right here. And this is what I'm gonna be using as my concealer today. And the reason, if you didn't watch that video, that I have kind of fallen back in love with this was just because I was looking for something that was like an ideal mix between Glossier Stretch Concealer and the Westman Atelier um, Vital Skin Foundation Stick because they both work so beautifully, but I just wanted a something a little bit more affordable <laughs> than uh, than the Westman Atelier that I feature in so many videos, and I just I don't know I get a little bit um, frustrated with the stretch concealer because if I try and build it, which I've been having some breakouts lately, it's great when my skin is um, just you know what I mean. I just need to camouflage a couple of things, but the discoloration has gotten pretty serious. I feel like I need a little bit heavier of artillery. Uh, to sort of blend everything the way that I want to and it just ends up getting really shiny and That's fine sometimes, you know, but uh, lately I've just really appreciated having this one because it goes on So much less shiny <laughs> It has a really really nice kind of like satin finish on the skin. This one right here was so big I don't really know what caused it. I want to say it was the Acure Glycolic that I tried and I talked about that in a recent vlog, if you guys keep up on my vlog channel. I'm also getting one right here, right on the top of my nose. 
The whole thing for me is to just toast it, right? With my, the light stem for acne. I love that thing. And I really, really do continue to use that all the time. It is one of the best purchases that I have ever made for my skin. Okay, we are complected. <laughs> we have the complexion product on and have done nothing to solve or at least remedy the fact that I do not look like I have a sunburn. <laughs> I purely look uh, just a little bit whiter than when I started. So the first thing I'm actually going to start with is the Daniel Sandler watercolor liquid cheek color in, this is actually the moon glow. I want to go with the sun glow. Where is she? This is the bronzer. I like this because I can use it down my neck to tan myself. I love that the reactions that I've gotten to using this on camera from a lot of you guys who have experience with the product, you guys all say that this lasts all day. And that is such a good endorsement from, you know, from everybody. I really like when I kind of get a general consensus from people that it's working for a lot of different skin types and a lot of different scenarios and things like that. Um, <laughs> whenever I start trying to do things on my neck and talking at the same time, it's always it always makes my voice sound funny, but yeah, I like that, you know, this is so, so lightweight and it dries down. So it's like, I can put this, you know, all the way down my neck and onto my chest and I don't feel like it's going to, I don't know, stay sticky, <laughs> like annoy me all day. And it really just blends to nothing. I kind of sit outside in the mornings <laughs> when I have my coffee and for whatever reason, even though I put sunscreen right there, I still get some like freckling right there in the center of my chest. It just is what it is. I was reading my, um, you know, 23 week pregnancy update, you know, thing. I don't know, baby list or what to expect or whatever. They were talking about the, um, the mask of pregnancy of melasma. And I was like, I had that long before pregnancy, <laughs> okay? It, uh, it definitely has gotten to be more of a mask. Like when I don't have my complexion products on, it really is like this haze that goes from like here all the way to here, all the way down here. It's very, they're like, oh, it'll go away once you, you know, get done with pregnancy. I'm like, will it? <laughs> Cause I've been, uh, I've been pretty familiar with old melasma for a while now. <laughs> I don't think she's going anywhere. So this is again, a little bit more of the Daniel Sandler and I'm just doing this to do like a, a watercolor wash as it were to where the sun would naturally hit my face. If you think about it, you're on the beach, right? Or you're on a boat even, you know, if you're on a boat and you're kind of getting like wind chapped a little bit, it's going to be, you know what I mean? Straight on. Um, and it's also gonna go like down onto your cheeks here. It's not going to be kind of that diagram of like, you know, contour and highlight. And also if you were on the beach, sand would reflect light up underneath your chin as well. Second step right before we go in with the Danessa Myricks is going in with the Bronzino in Best Coast from Tower 28. Oh, I forgot how annoying this is to open. The one good thing RMS ever did for me was give me this little paddle. <laughs> with that terrible foundation that they made. So again, this is the wrong shade. If you guys missed that, maybe it was my Sephora haul video, I'm not really sure, but <laughs> this was a thing that happened to everybody during the Sephora sale. Everybody got really excited about Bronzino. We all bought it on the Sephora sale in the lighter shade, the people who have lighter complexions. And they sent us the deeper one anyway. And so I made that whole video under the impression that I had goofed. <laughs> which was not, in fact, the case at all. <laughs> so I'm just using this to do just a general little blushy cheeky haze here. It still works, I like it. It's just a little bit glittery. And so I don't wanna use just this because, I don't know, it's more glittery than the Daniel Sandler and it's dewier than the Danessa Myricks. And so you guys, a few people balked that Tower 28 didn't make it into my mid-year favorites. And it was just because, you know, while they're beautiful, they're just not my favorite favorite. I like to recommend game-changing beauty products to people, things that when you guys buy them, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, this is everything that I thought it was going to be and more. And for whatever reason, Tower 28 is not that product where I feel like you're gonna use this and it's gonna feel greater than the sum of its parts. For whatever reason, that's just not how I feel about them, so. That's why. Of course there's a cat hair in there. Of course there is, because these are all beautiful creams and they're a little bit sticky, obviously, because they're creams. So you can see where I've already gotten 
a good bit of use out of these. One thing that I want to call out about this is that like, I'm really, really loving basically the makeup artist type products lately because they give you such a gradation of shades instead of like if you were to try and you know buy these shades any of these shades in a regular prestige product at Sephora they would probably condense like these three into one shade they'd be like we don't need all three of those they're so similar but like this is like no they're not similar enough you know we still want to have all of them and so I love having just the option of like a pinkier mauve, a deeper mauve, and then a cooler mauve, you know, it's just like, it's perfect. And so I am not a, you know, like I always say, a professional makeup artist or anything like that, but I'm still a degreed painter. <laughs> My degree is in studio art. And so this is how I think, basically. So the first thing that I want to do actually is go in with those mauve shades. And I know you're like, mauve, really khaki? You kind of have to experiment with how things behave on your skin. Because you have to think through, right, how your skin reacts in the sun, what color does it turn? Mine kind of goes a little bit, it, it like brings out a little bit of the cool tones, the cool undertones in my skin, because I don't really know, maybe it's like the blood vessels or something like that reacting to the fact that I probably shouldn't have stayed in the sun. <laughs> But also bearing in mind that everything turns a little bit pink on me. And so even if I use something that has a little bit of like a lavender undertone to it, it's still going to pull pretty red pink on me. And you see the placement? The placement is all over my cheeks. Could you make a five minute face out of this by like skipping the Daniel Sandler and the Tower 28? Absolutely, and I absolutely have. <laughs> Just using the Danessa Myers palette. It is so versatile it has so so many great options to it and i honestly like i think that experimenting with it is a lot of fun because there's no there's like nothing you can do that's like wrong you know <laughs> you're not gonna put it on your face and go oh no what have i done you're just gonna go hmm okay well i just learned something <laughs> again kind of going under my chin a little bit because like i said sun would reflect up from sand or water um, and it would kind of redden my chin. Suffice it to say, I'm very familiar with what my face looks like when it's sunburned. I've spent a lot of time in my life sunburned. Two things that I really love about this. One is these really, really pretty little apricot colors up here because those are going to give me the ability, like between this kind of like rosy tan situation, it's almost like the Kosa's uh, Velvet Melon. That's exactly what that looks like to me. And that is what I would typically use to kind of blend around the edges and make something that's a little bit contrasty, look a little bit more at home with like a fleshy tone on the rest of my face. And you know we're gonna go back in and kind of touch up with concealer as well. But again, that's kind of thinking from a painter's mindset of saying, okay, well, I want the local color to be the color that my cheeks turn that kind of like bright bricky red uh, that would happen if I were sunburned, but what do I need to do to make that look at home on my face? And you know, for me, it's using kind of this melon color, uh, which is not super detectable. You know what I mean? Your eye doesn't perceive melon, but it does perceive, oh, okay, well, <laughs> that's more blended, <laughs> I guess you could say. Okay, and then my favorite part about this is taking these like really, really deep tones right here, these beautiful kind of red undertoned, uh, yeah, just like browns and just barely touching my brush in there. And this is what I'm gonna use to add that like little bit too much sun look, you know? Be brave. You can always blend and wipe it off. It's not a big deal if you do too much. But this is the one that I wanna pull down on my cheeks. This is what I've always referred to on my channel as Nordic Child running through the fjords because I want it to look like I'm like wind chapped, you know, a pale person going and getting a little bit winded and maybe getting, um, you know, just like a flush in their cheeks and things like that. But everybody's always like, will you do merchandise? <laughs> will you do merch about Nordic Child running through the fjords? And I mean, before race was even like as much of a conversation as it is right now, I was always like, no, I'm not making like a, <laughs> a white girl exclusive meme on my merch. I'm not doing that because like, obviously 
Nordic people and the flush on their cheeks depends entirely on their skin being light. And I'm just not doing that. That's just not a thing that I want to do. Uh, and so, you know, if you are a person of color or a black person uh, and you have a hot take on that, that you want to tell me like, actually, I'm able to achieve this look or whatever, and this is how, let me know. But until then, I'm going to hedge my bets on the safe side and probably stay away from putting a white girl slogan on a t-shirt or a mug. So I think that basically this palette can be broken into three areas where you have these beautiful kind of warm tone browns, you have these cool tone mauves, and then you have these like, I, I would say almost neutral sort of like melony apricot uh, tan colors. This comes, I believe in four colorways, it might only be three, but uh, <sighs> This was the one that just absolutely like sung to me. Sang? Sung? Sung to my heart? Sang to my heart? Hmm. I'm usually pretty good at English. I can't even conjugate a verb today. So anyway, yeah, this was the one that, that sang to my heart. And we will talk a little bit more in detail about her in a bit because she is the star of today's show. Okay. I'm going to go back in with concealer like I always do. I don't really necessarily think that it is the fault of the Ritual Defeat in this case that like, oh, it disappears or like my face eats it like I always say. I just think I put on <laughs> a lot of blush. <laughs> that's, that's what happened. I will, I will take the fall on that one. And I'm just ever so slightly touching, touching, touching here. And I love that this does have almost as much pigmentation to it as like the Westman Atelier. And so you really can get color impact just by tap, 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 you know? If you guys saw what I called like my folksy <laughs> makeup look that I posted on Instagram last week, you might notice that there is one more thing that my face would naturally do if I were sunburned. And that is it would freckle. So I'm actually going to go in with more freckles using my, my freck here. And uh, in my last couple of videos, a lot of people have been like, oh my gosh, I'm so jealous of your freckles. I've told one girl, I said, about 25% of them are fake. <laughs> I've just been having a lot of fun going for this slightly better than natural, like almost like prairie vibes, you know? Like how I would look if I spent the whole day working on the farm. <laughs> Forgive me if I'm having a little bit of an escapism moment. <laughs> like that. See, it's subtle, but you can definitely see the difference. People told me that there were like opportunities that they had to find a sale on the Freck website where they were able to get the really like jumbo size for the price of this teeny tiny one. And if that's the case, I encourage you to follow suit if you're interested in this product. While I do think that this little tube is going to last me a very long time because you don't use hardly any, it is just, I mean, it's just a very, very tiny product. There's just something about that where you look at it and you're like, that doesn't seem like enough to do anything with. I've gotten pretty brave with this stuff because, well, not that brave, but because <laughs> it really is like, you know, super stampable basically. Although, <laughs> what have I done? It's just like, you know, you can take any of your fingers if they, you know, you don't want to spread them out. You just want to like lift them up almost. You can put some on my forehead here. I've definitely noticed my freckles getting darker during pregnancy anyway. And a lot of you guys have been like, oh, being pregnant during the summertime. And I'm just, I never even really thought about it, <laughs> but yeah, I can imagine this would be a little bit easier if you were <laughs> able to like wear sweaters, for example, like you probably wouldn't even be able to tell that I was pregnant most of the time if I could wear sweaters all the time, but no, instead I am. Um, a bubble in a dress. Also, not to mention just being hot. That's the whole thing. It's being really hot. <laughs> but one cool thing that has happened is that like these freckles right over my lip have gotten really dark. I like them. <laughs> I think that they are really neat. Having these little dark freckles right there on my cupid's bow, I'm like, I don't want to cover that up. Those are fun. <laughs> so uh, one thing that definitely happens to me when I get sunburned is that my lips turn really red. And it's just, you know, it's almost like my lips get sunburned. So I'm taking that deep shade right there. I don't think these have names, you know, I don't think they bother with that kind of like fussiness, you know, they're like uh, paint with the colors. Okay. But take that and give my lips that kind of rusty color right there in the middle. 
smudge that on really, really lightly. And these have enough grip to them that they are one of the first cream products that I found that actually like wears a long time on your lips. That doesn't happen very often. Most of these lend themselves, you know what I mean? Like the Salt New York, uh, the Cloud Paint, the Daniel Sandler, like they all lend themselves really, really well to skin, skin, skin. You know, they just do a beautiful job of that. But at the same time, um, you know, a lot of these things that we typically are used to seeing as creams, they're usually called like lip and cheek products. This is actually the first one that I found that's like truly like a wearable long, not long wear, but longer wearing lip and cheek product. So that's gorgeous. I might, you know, just take a little bit of like the apricot shade, go right on the outsides there. Again, giving us that local color, but uh, you know, blending it really seamlessly. Like you're not going to necessarily clock apricot, but. I do, I just love these deep tones for giving me like this beautiful, believable flush color. So I'm not gonna do an eye look today, but I do just wanna mattify my lids a little bit because my um, my mascara, I don't want to go everywhere. <laughs> so I'm just taking a little bit of the Well People Biobase Baked Brightener. It's going to add zero color. And you could just do this with a regular uh, translucent too. And uh, it's just going to set my eyelids without otherwise, you know, doing anything. I'm actually going to go in with a completely new product to me. So uh, this is not new at all, but new to me. This is the Milk Kush Mascara. It came in my little birthday gift kit. I hear such good things about this mascara and I've never tried it before. I know that it isn't uh, a tubing mascara or anything like that. At least I don't think so. I think I would have heard about that but that everybody really, really loves this mascara. So I'll just be prepared for a regular wash off. And I'm not going for like big, big lashes here. We're going cheeks, cheeks, cheeks. You know what I mean? This is gonna be like, I spent the day in the sun. It is not, I spent the day putting my makeup on. <laughs> we need highlighter, don't we? Okay, well, that's pretty. Let's do a little bit of the Daniel Sandler highlighter real quick, just because it's gonna go on really nice and evenly over this. And I don't feel like it's gonna steal the show. Definitely most of the highlighters that I have that are powders, if you put them on top of a cream like this, they're going to get really blinding and look makeup-y and makeup-y is not what I'm going for today. Putting a little bit on my brush here. Tap that kind of everywhere that the light might hit. Understanding that this is going to remain really beautiful and milky, more of a texture on the skin than any kind of like pigment. So it's also probably, unless I don't know how much you'd have to put on, but it doesn't feel like it necessarily interferes with the pigment that I've already built on my skin. And then the only thing left to do here is a little bit of brow. So I'm going to go in with the Michelle Phan, the M Cosmetics. I can never remember the name of the actual brand. I just always like remember her name. And why I'm going to use this one is just because of all of the hold, because I want big fluffy brows today. I think that the last step is to just put a little bit of gloss on top of the lip product that I just put on. And for that, yeah, I, I brought this back out. It's all been downstairs. That's why you haven't seen it on my channel. I actually use this quite a bit. You can see there's like, it's a lot gone, but uh, it's just been in my like downstairs stash where I actually, you know, like get ready in the morning sometimes. This is the Tower 28, just clear lip gloss. I love this stuff because it's so lightweight. It really is a fantastic formula. Oh, and actually one thing that I had been doing when I've been trying to kind of practice this makeup look is using a lip liner, which now is kind of out of order, <laughs> but we're going to do it anyway. This is a great use for the mauve lip pencil, which isn't really mauve at all. Let's be real. It's more kind of like an orangey rust or rose color and just using that because like look at that okay so for me when I'm out in the sun and my lips take on like a little bit of a sunburn um, I the the line right here like just on the inner portion of my lips not like lining my lips but sort of like right inside there darkens it gets more red and so again 
painter's mindset, we're just kind of painting in the details of what it would look like, right? This is how I look when I'm sunburned. <laughs> this is how I fake a sunburn. I'm gonna move you guys back out and we are going to dig in on the details of this Danessa Myricks palette right, right, right quick in case this is why you came to the video today was to learn more about this. Oh, I just love this look so much. You know, I almost feel like I could just do a little bit more. Yeah. Just a little bit more of that really, really beautiful red chocolate kind of color. It's like the color that chocolate is when it's melted because chocolate does take on a little bit more of like a warm tone when it's molten. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like aggressively rosy. That's what we're going for today. <laughs> Becky, you're getting carried away. <laughs> what else is new? <laughs> So this did, like I said, just recently come back into stock on Beautylish. I waited to order on Beautylish because it was out of stock on her website and Beautylish was the only other website I saw it on that had it that uh, I had heard of. Some of them seemed like they were uh, maybe in Europe or things like that. And I was like, okay, I'm just gonna wait instead of kind of like paying to ship them really far or something like that. Beautylish just has the best shipping and the best customer service. So there are so much cool stuff on here. I'm sure people who are more familiar with the brand than I am are going to comment down below and be like, you have to try this, you have to try this, you have to try this. And you're probably right. I think that we should. So anyway, speaking about this particular palette, this was $44 and you get what? A total of 12 times four grams, 48 grams of product here. Pretty darn good. That's actually really good. <laughs> that's less than a dollar. Yeah, that's less than a dollar a gram. That's like, that's pretty freaking good. So she also does online courses. That is very cool, uh, learning to do makeup and stuff. So yeah, there's a full line. I'm not gonna go through everything because they're mainly, I, what I think is the coolest thing about these lines, and I mean, this one specifically, but also a lot of the more fleshed out makeup artist owned lines like this, is that they really just deal in pigments. They deal in, here's a texture, that you're gonna probably wanna understand and use on the skin. And here are a bunch of shades that I think you're gonna to wanna to play with um, to get the looks that you're trying to achieve. But we're not calling this a blush. We're not calling this an eyeshadow. We're not calling this, you know, a palette of whatever, which is what kind of sets it apart from, to me, you know, shopping at Sephora or something where they're making things very consumer friendly, saying like, okay, you're not a makeup artist. We probably don't assume that you're going to buy something that's just kind of like a melange of colors. Whereas I love thinking in paints, you know, I love thinking in uh, just looking at my collection and being like, I don't know where this was supposed to go on my face. I just know where I want it to go on my face. <laughs> you know? If you are familiar with this line, like very familiar with this line, and you're also familiar with like the things that I love to put on my face on my channel, definitely tell me because this is a big, <laughs> it's a big uh, collection that she has to navigate. Tell me like what is an absolute must try from her collection. As a makeup artist, photographer, and entrepreneur, Danessa Myricks has mastered the perfect beauty application and image and made a name for herself as one of the most creative in our makeup industry. With the creation of her eponymous line, Danessa Myricks Beauty and her work in the studio, Danessa continues to creatively combine art and product manipulation as she pushes the beauty industry forward in both her artistry and product innovation. Inspired initially by the inner sphere of the beauty business, Danessa's career hit the ground running at the corporate level where she discovered her true passions aligned the tra trajectory toward artistry. With insights and business structure intact, she noticed she noted the highest opportunities were to alleviate the issues of cosmetic marketing for ethnic skin tones and coloring the world. There's a, there's a uh, sparkly background behind the words. My astigmatism is freaking out. From fair to deep complexions, Danessa always aimed to touch all faces equally. Danessa's artistic expertise and drive enabled opportunities to work on the faces of numerous celebrity projects with entertainers from music to film and her approach to beauty ignited the desires to co-create with global beauty brands like Kiss, Benefit Cosmetics, and Limelight by Alcone. Danessa also has had multiple consulting initiatives for both Prestige Pro and uh, Mastige beauty brands globally. Mastige is, that's a new um, portmanteau. It's like a new portmanteau to me. How lovely is that? Yeah, so I definitely wanna learn more about her as a creator and as a makeup artist because obviously these products are brilliant and 
as I like to say, very well-informed. Well-informed from the standpoint of skin tones, obviously, but also well-informed from the standpoint of just a ton of experience. And I feel like when I shop at a brand like this, <laughs> I am borrowing decades of experience from another person. I'm saying, you went and did all of this legwork to learn how the best products should perform on my skin. And so all I have to do is buy the product and all of that expertise is built in. That's an amazing gift. Very, very cool. Really, really glad that I bought this. I've just been having so much fun with it. I've been wearing it like every single day. And this again is my how to fake a sunburn vibe. This is like the, you know, the picture that I had on my Instagram last week where I said like, you know, this folksy little look took five minutes, whatever, because it really, it did. It's just a lot of fun to paint with this. So yeah, if you guys have questions about any of the products or any of the techniques that I used today, definitely let me know if you have any other like video requests like this, like concepts. I loved the idea of doing this. And so um, I really, really appreciate the person who commented that. I also just appreciate you guys ongoing interaction and your sweet, sweet comments. I just appreciate you guys so much. You make it all worth it. So if you did enjoy this, do give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, guys, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. I hope that you guys are taking really good care of yourselves. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.